one of the inherent challenges that we have as salespeople is that we're we're collectors of so much data that goes on out there and in many cases depending on how many clients we're working and things that are going on and all the input that's coming in sometimes we don't have a place to put it and in many cases that can be disastrous in the sales industry because we lose our focus we lose our concentration and in many cases we might lose where we're at with a client and so one of the things that I utilize with my sales students and my sales managers is the utilization of a prospect follow-up chart. Yep, that's right, a prospect follow-up chart. What I like about the prospect follow-up chart is, one, is that you, be it a salesperson or sales manager, can design it exactly how you want it as it relates to your industry or your sales process. So that's one of the great things about it. Two, is that it will help each salesperson keep on track as it relates to the specific sales steps and all those little things that have to happen. I often say in the seminars that I teach that the sales process from the very start to conclusion, hundreds of little things have to happen within that process to bring that situation to a successful conclusion. So therefore, one of the things that we utilize is the prospect follow-up chart. Now what I'm going to do is just show you a quick example of one, and this is from a company that I consult to in Dallas. You can see that it's on an 8.5 by um, 11 paper, not a big deal. We actually designed it ourselves, and what we did is we basically just put it in a Microsoft Word format so we can print it out at any time. We can have hundreds of copies of it. We use a little logo up here and all this kind of stuff. So they're really easy to make, and this is about the most generic that you can get. Back in the old days, when I started in the sales industry back in the early 80s, what we had were 3 by 5 cards. So now it's gotten a little bit more elaborate, and obviously there's more elaborate follow-up systems. But you know what I like about this is anybody can do it, and you can do it today. So let me just go through the chart uh, from a visual standpoint, and then I'm going to give you the specifics um, about all the different things that you could actually put into your system. So up here what we've got is we've got the name and the pertinent information of the client. And please note, one of the first columns that I have is their email address because that's one of the basic forms of communication that we use. But also along with the address, city, state, and zip, and all those kind of things, I also have right here their date of birth. That's right, every one of my clients and every one of my sales students has to ask for that date of birth. Year not necessary, but that's very important in the follow-up. In addition to that, we also have the client's hobby or their passion. Now a lot of times I've found that a lot of people say, oh my kids. Well you know what, the kids, those are not automatic, those are a given. What I'm trying to find out is what makes that client tick. Is it a dream, is, is it a vacation, is it a car, whatever it might be. Do they, you know, do they fly airplanes, do they mountain bike, do they weight lift. That's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for for their hobby or passion because I need to know that in regards to follow up. So as we move along with this form right here, this company here classifies their, um, their clients as VIPs or non-VIPs. And look at the different things. I mean, there's probably about 20 little steps here for, uh, for each salesperson to perform with that client. Now, do they do every step? Absolutely not. They're certainly not going to do every step. But let's look at some of the ones that they have up here because they're very interesting. I'm going to go through each one of them. But first of all, is the client's information been added to Outlook? Well, obviously, it needs to go into some database. What's the personality and style of the client? Are they a director, a socializer, relator, or thinker? Over here, what's the communication preference of the client? You know, you might be an email king, but they might not be. So what is it? Is it phone? Is it fax? Is it mail? Is it, you know, what is it? But ask. When you ask, you can find out and know for sure. The next one here is, what do you believe as their major objection to your product or service? What do you think that's going to be? And that's very important in the sales cycle because we can again mold that presentation around closing that door, closing that objection before it even occurs. Google intelligence, huge, huge to be able to put that person's name in and, and put the city and hit you know, Google and go see what intelligence you might be able to find on that specific client that will help you develop that intimate connection with that client. In addition to that, initial calls, follow-up book sent, brochure sent, website visited, Fast Facts Profile, does the client have it? A main point card, do they have that? Um, a PowerPoint presentation, if you're using PowerPoints, has the client seen it? Do they understand it? Let's go over here to the other column. 
Third party testimonial, huge. Have they seen that? Conference call, is that part of your sales process? Does the client need to be on that? Uh, a seminar scheduled. Have the Outlook follow-ups been placed into Outlook? As an example, the 7-day or 30-day or the 60-day or whatever your process is. Are those specific follow-up days put in the calendar of Outlook or whatever it is that you're using that prompts you for that follow-up? Has their date of birth been put into Outlook? What do you need help with? And this right here is for sales managers. You know, Come in and be able to find out what you need help with with this specific client. What can you do to go to the next step? Um, have you asked for a referral? Have you TOMA touched the client? TOMA standing for top of mind awareness and we'll talk about TOMA in a, in a later video. But is it a done deal? Is it a no? Or is it a maybe? You know, These are all the different steps. So look at your sales process and run out all those steps of what are those things that you should be doing or should not be doing for the client and then you can fill this out with each client and then check them off as you go. It's real simple. The more check marks that you have of the significant sales steps the closer you're going to be to closing the, the deal. Now the other thing that I found with some of my clients here specifically in the Dallas area is that one of the CEOs he actually demands that all the salespeople keep their follow-up charts and notebooks on their desk. Why? So he can go in at any minute's notice and walk into the salesperson's office and open up that notebook and look at the notebook and see where are we with this client? Where are we with that client? And more importantly he's looking over here what do they need help with? What does that sales person need help with? So that CEO or sales manager or vice president, whatever their you know whoopie doo title is, can go in there and check out what that information is. So you know, in closing this segment today, the prospect follow-up chart is a wonderful way to stay organized. It's so simple to make one. You can do it in a Word doc. There's more elaborate systems. I mean, I, I know some that are all electronic based that help you with the follow-ups. But you know what? If you don't have that system or if you don't know how to how to use an elaborate system. You know what, start off with a form or a prospect follow-up chart that is as simple as this piece of paper right here. So what a great tip for you this week. Hey, I also wanted to let you know that I've had a lot of people send in efficiency charts, plus my obviously my sales students use them. But I just wanted to you know, show you that people are using this, but here's one at 79% for the week. Here's another one at 67% for the week. Here's another one at 37%. Uh, but let's look, he was off on Labor Day, so he's got that in. And actually, this was his coaching session today, and he still has all day tomorrow, too. So 37%, and actually a day and a half is off the list. Here's another individual, 276% on his efficiency chart. Here's another one at 75%. So, you know, those uh, efficiency charts are being used by the salespeople out there. And um, I encourage you to go back through the videos and find the one that says sales efficiencies and you guys can watch that video and use efficiency charts as well. So in closing today, don't forget, sales seminars, individualized personalized sales coaching, sales management consulting, I'm probably your guy to help you increase higher revenues, work less, make more, and have fun doing it. So with that, Good selling. Godspeed. Have a great sales week. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.